Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start talking about registers. Because we've already finished our AOU at this point, there's nothing more to be said or to do. So we're going to start talking about what our registers are, what they do, and what makes the ideal register. So first off, what are registers? And registers are memory, just like any other type of memory in the computer. The th only thing that makes registers special is their memory specifically for the AOU. Their memory that will hold whatever data the AOU is working with at that specific instant in time. So for example, let's say I need to add 5 plus 8 plus 7 plus 3 for some reason. Don't, doesn't matter why, we need, but we need to. If I access that directly from our big giant memory system for the entire computer, that could end up being really, really slow because ideally when you're building memory for the whole giant computer, that's not really optimized for speed. That's optimized to hold as much memory in a single space as possible, generally speaking. So, that could end up being a bit of a problem. So, that's why registers exist in the first place. They're very fast, generally speaking, and since AOU is only working with so much memory at once, it's really good to have a nice, small set of registers. So let's talk about what makes an ideal register. Now obviously, it's going to have to be fast. If we don't have a fast register, then we're going to end up back with the same problem of accessing it directly from memory. At that point, you're not really solving anything. So we need these things to be fast, even if they end up being much larger than normal memory. The second thing I'm going to talk about with registers, how much of them do we really need? Because the AOU obviously isn't going to need that much memory because I'm working with all at once. It's only going to be working with, yeah, so much memory at once. So, in order to just keep that at ideal levels, we're just going to have only so many registers. So the question is, how many registers should we have? Two? Four? Eight? Sixteen? Regardless of what you choose, generally you'll want to have it be an exponent of two. So, like I said, two, four, eight, or sixteen, or thirty-two, something like that. And the bigger reason for that is addressing. A decoder is going to be taking in a binary number. So, if, for example, I'll just look at my AOU. Now, these are all binary numbers. So, there's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. Ideally, you'll just want it to be one of these exponents of 2, because that way you can utilize the entire binary number. If I have only 30, well, I might be able to have 5 bits of information, but I can't use all of those 5 bits. So, you know, ideally, you want it to be very fast and have a exponent of 2 quantity. So that leads to the question of how many sh specifically should I have? What exponent of 2 is ideal? And you could argue many different systems. I'm going to argue that 8 is probably ideal because it have, gives you a nice bit of space to work with, yet you're not having 32 p bits of inf or pieces of information to work with once because, I mean, come on. When are you going to be working with 16 or 32 different pieces of information in registers at once. Not that often. If you're going to be working with a really fancy computer, so not this, then maybe that might be ideal. But in this case, I think 8 is going to be a perfect amount. So then, the only real question left then, since registers are memory just like any other memory, is how many pieces of information to be able to read at once, and how much information should I have to write at once? And you usually don't ask this, because usually you think, okay, memory's going to have one read, one write, end of story. But registers, they can be a bit different, because our AOU is a bit weird. It doesn't take in one piece of information and spit back another piece of information. If you notice right here, it takes in two pieces of information, input A and input B. And, of course, over here, we have one output. So two inputs, one output. So we're going to want to arrange our reads and writes accordingly, because we don't have to wait to read a certain amount of information over and over until we get enough information in our AOU. No, that's just going to bottleneck the system. That's going to bring us right back to the problem of reading directly from memory. So, let's start with our output. We have one output. What's our output going to be doing in our registers? Generally speaking, you're going to be saving your output to your registers. You're not going to be reading an output out of your registers because, I mean, that defeats the whole purpose of the AOU. The AOU is going to be giving you some output, 
and you're going to want to save that into the registers. So, we're going to have just one write, because there's nothing else we're going to write at the same time. Now, second thing, though, how many reads should we have? Now, we have two inputs to the AOU, so we don't want to overdo it. We don't just want to have one read, because then we have to read out our first input, and then read our second input secondly, and that's just not going to be ideal. We're going to want to read both at once. So, ideally, you should have two reads in your register. And the big reason for that is, again, you just, you're going to have two things to read from at once, two inputs at once. If you have two reads from your registers, you can read in two in from <laughs> you can read in two inputs at once. And so, at the end of the day, the re all yeah, the end result of all that is you have this nice, efficient register system. And that's really all I'm going to talk about register design right now because there's really not that much that goes into it, but it's very important to go into it, or you're going to end up with a really inefficient system. So yeah, so thank you. And I will see you next time, where we will be talking about how we can actually build an ideal register system. So thank you, and I'll see you next time.